He's a big boy. I remember the good old days. We were cutting in Action Script 1 in sight. I mean, look at this pure design that was our sublime text at the time. Pure scripting, uh, config files, no UI. Things that should be quite familiar to you if you use sublime text. Then Macromedia really is Action Script 2, and there wasn't a good editor for that. I mean, you had to use Flash. So in 2005, I found this Flash developer from Finland, Mika Palmu, who was making a simple script editor in .NET. And I said, hey, come on, add a plugin system and we'll do an action script to editor. So Flash Develop 2 was born, and we seen that it was good, and it was simple. Uh, I Nobody remembers why it was Flash Develop 2, but here it is. Uh, the next year, Flash Develop 2 had a project panel and starting to look like a proper IDE. And when ActionScript 3 was released, this was the very first public IDE with ActionScript 3 support. Uh, it wasn't very good, but it was there. And um, Probably around the same time, Nicholas was working on the Hacks FD plugin to add Hacks to Flash Develop 2. Next year, we added Hacks support and uh, released Flash Develop 3. Comparatively, Hacks support wasn't very good at the time because the truth is that the Flash Develop team was doing action script for a living, so Hacks progressed very slowly. But on the other side, Flash Develop was becoming quite a popular Action Script IDE. Uh, then 2011, released Flash Debug 4 with a very, very good Flash debugger. It was an amazing time to code in Action Script. You had natural tooling, natural libraries. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So Flash Property would soon hit a wall, like badly. And two years later, we pivoted. And uh, we moved to GitHub. And since then, we've had a lot of contributors. I mean, more, con con more contributors than we ever had. Uh, we added continuous integration, so you always have a fresh dev build. And more importantly, Mika and I moved to Hacks professionally. That is, we've been using full time and that suddenly we had a lot more motivation to improve Hacks support. <laughs> so, you know, if on issues. Uh, and today we're announcing Flash Develop 5, 10th year, 10 years anniversary edition. <laughs> <laughs> and you can download it now. So featuring glorious high resolution support. It looks beautiful on your Retina MacBook with Windows. <laughs> uh, UI seeming has been a big focus and we'll soon have uh, custom controls rendering throughout the app, like this kind of slick scroll bars uh, like in Visual Studio. Um, featuring great web development tools, um, FlashDevelop offers a rich code completion for HTML, CSS, and uh, we now have an integrated web server, which is very handy and a lot more robust than Nikotu servers. Featuring easier installation of third-party plugins and themes, because there's a number of great plugins, and you probably non don't know them, so I'm going, going to show you a very cramped screenshot. So you have like this sublime text like minimap. It's pretty impressive. 
Visual Studio-like uh, navigation drop-downs, uh, an ant panel, um, hex color preview as you type, um, quick outline, quick navigation pop-ups, but it's all done with plugins because it's very easy to make plugins for Flight Develop, unlike some other uh, Java platform. Uh, and for instance, you have the Huxley, Hux UI uh, with live preview, which is a really fun and easy enough thing to do. Anyway, this is all nice, but the real deal is hacks, right? So it's featuring a lot more hacks. But it's worth noting that FlashJob has two hacks completion engines. The first one is uh, built in, it is fast, it is uh, error tolerant, it even does some uh, type inference by itself, <laughs> but obviously a bit limited uh, compared to the Hux compiler. However, however this uh, powers um, all the code navigation, code generation, auto imports, all that is provided by this engine. And it improved a lot in the last two years. And the second engine is uh, the Hux compiler completion, which uh, is used commonly on the other editors. This is the most accurate completion, obviously, uh, but it's slower, especially when you have very large projects, and it's quite sensitive to code errors. So FlashDevop will run both engines. First, it shows you the Intel engine results, if it worked, then it shows you, it updates with the compiler completion results, if it worked. So this is very unique and uh, powerful, and we're quite proud of that aspect. Uh, then FlashJob comes with more templates and better templates. Uh, this has always been a big feature of FlashJob, and we've improved the integration with uh, third-party tool chains like OpenFL, Flambe, uh, Lux, and now plain old HXML, which can be used like an external tool chain. What that means is that FlashDevop will monitor this project file and automatically <coughs> update cut completion, building, running within uh, FlashDevop, and it's all automatic, seamless, and you can extend it to your own tool chain if you have one, it's completely open. Then in the project panel, you now have uh, all your dependencies in the references node, including hack slips. So if you mention hack slips in your project settings, be it in OpenFL, in your HXML, or, or whatever, it will appear here and you'll know what version you're using. You have a quick tree of your classes. This is really handy. and. Uh, you can just go and edit your uh, project file and it will refresh automatically to show you whatever you changed. It's like magic. But well, if the magic didn't work, uh, you still have a nice message in the output panel, like, God damn it, install the lib. So keep an eye on the panel. <coughs> the final touch is the SDK management, which is now rock solid. That means that you can install as many hacks SDKs on your system, even multiple, even duplicates of one version, and it will just work. FlashDevop will set up your hacks and micro environment, depending on the project you have. So it's again automatic. You don't have to worry or use scripts or whatever to switch. So that's for now, what you have in FlashDevelop 5 now. And we have a few things coming soon. Like, as I said, fully custom themable controls for really nice theming and hopefully uh, dark themes that look good. Uh, we are working on integrating the new Hux compiler services. We improve uh, the go-to definition and the refactoring uh, features. We'll have a 64 bits build, because why not? And something crazy is being 
worked on by our contributor, Slavara. The idea is to provide smarter contextual code templates. Like in the screenshot, you can wrap uh, the variable with a null check, so it generates a null check. And for an array, it would offer you to generate a loop uh, or to iterate on a map. I think that will really change the way we code. Uh, that's really exciting improvement that's going to happen. It's like it's injecting snippets as you code. Uh, so you code in reverse. That's quite interesting. Then at this point you might be asking, does it run on Mac yet? <clears throat> well, of course you should install Windows on it. Uh, but we're making big progress on why the crossover support. Uh, it's becoming really usable, so that's on Mac. Uh, it, it does work, it does work quite well. Uh, and the future seeming improvements will save us from the ugly XP scroll bars. So that's Linux. And this works already. So if you're brave enough, uh, you can search for uh, file develop and crossover on YouTube. Um, uh, yeah, so there's still a bit of work, but I mean, you can give it a try. It's quite easy to install, in fact. So, I mean, that's all, folks. Enjoy Hacks Develop. And don't forget the magic shortcut, because magic happens only if you use it. If you have one or two questions. Yeah, a while back on Flash Develop, I was working with a guy on um, hex C++ debugging on Flash Develop because the Flash debugger is really good. And um, mm -hmm. But then I just kind of forgot about it and lost focus for about a year. But I was just wondering if um, you guys had done anything with it since. So there's been an experimental uh, C++ debugger. It's been done uh, a little while ago, so it was on a previous version of HXCCP, HXCPP. Uh, it was working quite nicely, um, but the contributor didn't have the time to update that. But that is effectively as soon as he really has time. I mean, that's something that works. Uh, but there are a few issues in terms of integration, like uh, you have to inject. I mean, for that to be seamless, you'd have to inject code or hacks code in a way, because you have to um, include a C++ library. I mean, a C++ bit or hacks bit of code for that to work. Um, but yeah, generally, yeah, uh, that there was some nice uh, proof of concept that we need to transform uh, that would require a bit of time. I'd really like also to work on JavaScript, like remote debugging in Chrome for JavaScript target. Um, but again, that's a hell of a lot of time. Hey, Philip, uh, great talk. I'm wondering about the, uh, the version crossover. Is that Flash Develop 5? Uh, you can install whatever version. I mean, Flash Develop 4.7 works with crossover. Flash Develop 5, too. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll try it out. So it's still for the brave, uh, especially if you want to change the coding font, because on Mac it really looks like crap. Uh, so you have to install like uh, open source, uh, like a source code pro, which is quite good, but then that's another level uh, in crossover to change the fonts. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, um, if you have a simple editor like TechMate or Sublime, you can just drag the folder into the thing. Can you drag mm. a folder into Flash Develop and it will just work out? No, not yet. I All want right. to do that. I really want to do that. That's totally no plans, yeah. To, to be able to just open a folder. Or, or alternatively, you could, for instance, open a, an HX, HXML file. That would also be an option. Um, 
Like if you open it from the outside, it would suggest that you want to open it at the project. So we have a few ideas like that, but yeah, yeah, hey, it's going to happen. Thank you very much. Yep. Welcome to Gunship.